Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here, back again with some more on the Ford 8.8 differential. Now I mentioned before, this is very similar to a GM 12 bolt and a lot of differentials of this type. In this installment, the plan is to clean, prep, and paint this thing, getting it ready for reassembly. Let's get started. Okay, here we are, completely stripped down. All the bearing races have been taken out. The bearings and the ends have been taken out. Everything's all stripped down in the, from the previous video. In this video, I'm gonna get this whole thing cleaned up. Uh, I'm gonna get all the junk off of everything that I'm gonna be using and uh, get it ready for paint. As you can see, there's been a fair bit of carnage and quite a few tools that have been used during the process of disassembly. Just to get things on the level and keep things clean, I'm going to package up all the stuff that I'm not using, get all the stuff that I am going to use, organize, put away the tools that I'm not using, and just basically get myself ready. The main idea here being that I want to get everything cleaned up and everything organized and ready so that as I clean, as I do my work, I end up with a clean workplace to, to lay my new stuff. Got some jack stands set up here with something to catch my goo. And uh, I'm gonna try to set the differential housing down onto here. It's considerably lighter with all the stuff in it. Um, I just hope I got them spread wide enough apart. And I do. Gonna clean my workbench and take these guys over to the parts washer. And let those soak while I clean the bench. It's brake clean. There we are. Now, got a nice clean surface to work on when uh, we're all done. And a couple of new gouges. I don't call it a workbench for uh, putting flowers on it. That would be called a flower bench. Keep these around because we're going to need to clean the differential too. I'm going to switch to my industrial strength gloves. Put a link in the description for tools and stuff that I'm using. Well, I have the stuff mostly clean. The uh, pinion flanges down underneath there soaking for a little bit. I'm gonna leave the rest of these to soak and just let the uh, parts washer cycle. Uh, it goes through the filtration system and actually makes it cleaner. One of the bushings came out of here. So if I do reuse this part, which I'm not sure if I'm gonna be reusing it or not, I might go with a different setup. But now let's uh, go focus on the differential. Well, that stuff's doing its thing over there. I'm gonna clean this up inside and out, clean out these axle tubes, clean out the outsides. I want to also get this prepped for paint if possible. I'm not going for perfect, I'm going for pretty nice. This is something that's going to live underneath the car, it's not like it's going to be inspected, any of that kind of thing. I just want to do it mainly because of I've got some other shiny parts I'm going to be putting on it and I don't want to embarrass myself. Just going to use this Rolock disc. I'm going to try to tip it this way because I don't want a bunch of crap getting down in there if I can avoid it. Is that a gasket? Yep. There's a gasket on there. I wish they would have glued it to the outside instead of the inside. It's so much easier that way. Ah, might be okay. This, uh, actually turning out to be not so bad. That was less painful than I thought it would be. Still gonna go around and 
clean it up a bit more. I decided to borrow some of the uh, parts washing material and I'm going to try to get some of these larger areas like underneath here cleaned up with that. Actually, I'm gonna try scraping some of the big stuff off of the screwdriver first. I think the ideal situation would be to take this someplace and have it media blasted or something of that nature, have it all completely cleaned out. I looked for some places, local, couldn't really find any. So um, I'm going for the elbow grease approach. Remember that bushing I saw over there that was bad? This is the underside. It looks like it was hitting on the underside there. It's not a bad thing that that's gone away for now. And at the very least, we'll replace those bushings. Whoops. Well, I hope that's all the big chunks. Now I can start digging in with the parts washer and get the smaller stuff, get it degreased, and then start cleaning out the inside. I'm gonna clean the inside last because I'm exposing it to so much out here right now. To me, it makes sense to do it that way. Let's see how my setup works. Okay, I think I've got the big chunks off. I'm still gonna wire wheel this so that I can prep it for paint. I'm gonna clean the inside. There's still, there's still a ways to go here. I'm gonna go to the axle ends and clean those with a little bit of the mineral real spirits. The side had an axle seal replaced because there's almost no stuff in here. I don't wanna be tracking this stuff all over the shop. I admit I probably should have done this before I swept, <laughs> uh, but I'm gonna get it ready for uh, the wire wheel that I'm gonna hit the outside with to get the rest of this stuff off and get some of this rust off and prep it for paint. Might as well take these bolts out. I'm gonna use these wire wheels and my angle die grinder. And I'm probably gonna be here a while. <laughs> but the idea is to clean the outside and get as much of the rust off as I can. I'm not going for perfect, but I definitely wanna get it dried off. I definitely wanna get it to the point where I can paint it. If I paint over a little rust and it comes back, I'm not really too worried about it. It'll look good for a little while. I'm more concerned about what's inside than what's on the outside.
Here's the result. Did I get every speck of rust off of here? No. Did I get enough off to throw a paint job that's acceptable for me on here? Yes. Now that I've gotten all that done, the plan is to clean out the inside since, you know, I made all this dust and everything in here and I want to uh, definitely get as much of that gunk and dirt out of here as possible. Now you might be wondering what the broomstick is for. Well, that's to clean the tubes. I'm going to use brake clean for the inside uh, instead of the parts washing stuff. This is actually what's recommended. Let's get a good thorough rinsing. I'm going to go in here with a cleaner rag this time and finish up. I'll flip it around just to make sure I get down inside. Uh, where the pinion lives. Looking lovely. This right here is the oil return. Let's try the axle tube cleaning technique. That's where the bearing and seal live. Definitely want to get rid of that. And try different rag so it's not to take that metal stuff in there works pretty good There's a lot of junk in there. Get a clean rag and keep doing this until it comes out clean. Yeah, rag's coming out clean. Move to the other side. I'm getting short on rags. I want to be sure I have enough. So I start using the old one. And I'll finish with the new one that's clean. I'm going to do a real good second cleaning of this center section. Clean out these bolt holes for sure. I'm going to hit them with some compressed air also. This is oil supply and oil return down inside here. So this big gaping hole and then the small holes of return. So as the gears move, it sort of moves oil around the inside of the case. And I want to be sure that there's no junk or anything in those. I'm also going to clean these bolt holes out. I'm going to point this down and away so this stuff doesn't come blowing out. In my face, I meant. Something just popped out. It was just a little bit of goo from the gasket. One final wipe down of the outside. And I'm gonna paint it. And I'm gonna take uh, one of these rags and soak it in brake cleaner. 
and use it to pretty much wipe down the entire exterior of the differential. That should make it ready to paint. So I'm sitting here thinking, how can I get this to where I can support it, but I can also paint it? I'm trying to think of a way to do that. And the broomstick sort of gives me an idea. Okay, check it out. I took the old axle shafts and just put them in the ends. So that way I can rotate this whole thing to get at different angles and stuff. I can put a jack stand up underneath, uh, just like I was when I was doing everything else. Who cares if I get paint on my jack stand? Who cares if I get paint on these old axles? All right, it's late in the day and it got dark, so I moved Oliver outside. I'm gonna paint this inside. The element, I think that's gonna be far enough away. The Mustang, I don't care if I get a little bit of overspray on that. Uh, I'm just gonna be real careful. As far as ventilation, well, this place is cavernous. I don't think it's gonna be an issue. Uh, and I can put on a mask, but I'm going to show you a cool way to mask this huge area here off because uh, I don't want to get stuff down inside there and I'm probably going to stuff a rag down into the opening for the pinion. Now, this was taught to me, so it's not like I'm special. Masking tape, start with that. You're like, Eric, you're really not showing us anything new. You're just covering the hole with tape. My response, be patient. All right, now you're like, okay, Eric, where's the cool part? It's right here. This works on cast iron. The aluminum, you gotta be a lot more careful, but this is cast iron, so what all you do is tap with the hammer a little bit. You get into these indents. Look at that. It perfectly cuts it. Yep, that worked really good. How you like me now? When you do this, take the hammer and slide it a little bit. That'll do, donkey. That'll do. Eric, what kind of paint are you using? I'm using this. It is uh, made for chassis. It's uh, good for up to 250 degrees, roll bars, all kinds of stuff. It's self-priming, so I don't have to prime anything. It's just spray and go. I bought two cans of it just in case. I'm hoping I only need one, but we'll see. I start with light coats and then get thicker towards the end. Came up with an idea to keep overspray out of the axles, out of the tubes. These are just dirty rags. They're not the ones with metal in them. Take baby teeth, and put them inside these. I really do. It's a baby's tooth. Stop shaking the can and paint it already, Eric.
Okay, I almost forgot the mask. Almost. I'm just going with like a light top coat. I'm not going for coverage right now. Because I set things up the way I did, I can actually flip it now. gonna let that coat dry come back in a little bit and put another coat on Okay, I'm gonna let it sit for a bit, set up, then come back and try to get spots like that that are still a little dull. Okay, it's been a few minutes. I'm gonna do some last little touch-ups, and then we'll call this done. That there's an empty can of paint. One last look. I think it looks pretty good, better than the way it did when I started, clearly. It's just what I wanted, a little bit of gloss with some black, mostly to protect it more than anything else. But this thing, I'm going to say, is ready for assembly. Well, there you have it, kids, a freshly painted and prepped 8.8 .8 differential ready to be assembled and installed into my Fairmont. I'm excited. I'm tired, but I'm excited. Anyway, uh, I'll put links in the description to anything that was pertinent throughout the video. If you have automotive questions, I'm also going to put a link in the description to ericthecarguide.com, which is where I ask you go if you have those automotive questions. Google+, Plus, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, if you wish to connect with me socially. Close each of my videos. Be safe. Have fun. Stay dirty. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.